Hey folks, Tim here from High End Cheap Tech. Gonna run a turn off the exposure just a hair. Alright, there we go. Ooh, a little shaky. Um, today we're gonna talk about IP ratings. Little bit of news we got. Uh, Samsung is getting their butt suit off by some arm of the Australian government for essentially making misleading claims in their ads. Now, they're not making actual verbal claims, but they're using photographs and videos of people uh, sitting right next to a swimming pool or standing on, you know, on the beach next to the ocean. And, you know, at that point, they, well, these are no, our phones are IP, IP 68 rated. Whoa, that's good. And uh, let's go over a couple of things. Waterproof versus water resistant. Folks, the only thing I know in the world that's waterproof is a submarine for the most part. Because when you get 400 feet down, God knows what the pressure is there. But a pinhole... You know, if you put, you know, you get a stream of water coming out of that, which would almost, within minutes, flood a compartment. I mean, if you put your hand up, I'll just plug it, and it drill a hole through your finger in a second. So, submarines are waterproof. Nothing else is. Water resistant is different. Water resistance means... how much ingress protection you have. And I'm going to throw a graphic up here. And uh, IP stands for ingress protection. And number six shows the dirt and dust protection. Basically six is, you know, right up there as high as you can get, which means you're not going to get any dust getting inside your phone or dirt maybe she bury it for 10,000 years if it finds its way in but for the most part it won't so um last is the eight or a seven there's ip 67 ip 68 they basically differ on how far underwater they can be left for a period of time. Most of them, you know, it's considered to be a few minutes. Now, the hope is you're not a moron, like some of the uh, advertisers out there. Did I call them advertisers? Influencers, that's what uh, the nice YouTube term is. I call them advertisers. They're advertisers, folks. These are people who are given these phones, and uh, especially by cheapskate companies. And, of course, they have a contract that says, you know, on this day, you this is the first video you release. I remember when the um, OnePlus 7 Pro came out. And ASBYT even showed the book. It was like this thick. That ain't, you know, guide for reviewers. It's not a guide. It's a freaking contract. And it tells you in what order you're going to talk about the various and sundry things. It tells you when you're going to release it. I don't know if anyone noticed, but go back to the first reviews. Advertisements from like Dave 2D. Matthew Moniz, uh, who else was there? I don't think Unbox Therapy did one. Uh, but they all had this convenient drawer of water. Water. H2O. And they dropped the phone in there. And OnePlus doesn't have an IP rating. Because they're cheapskates, they're trying to keep their costs down. And 
having worked for underwriters laboratories, I understand that certification on a product can be quite expensive. I mean, to get a, like a television or a radio UL certified, well, we don't certify anything. Approved? Yeah. No, we don't approve nothing. Listed. In other words, it meets this set of standards. Well, first off, there's nothing that has electricity that gets a listing at UL uh, that offers any mention of waterproofness or water resistance. As a matter of fact, the owner's manuals always say, hope anything you buy that plugs in the wall, and it'll say, keep away from rain and moisture, do not bring in bathrooms, because like the number one killer of people with electricity is morons who, I had a little transistor radio, you know, telling the story in heaven, or hell, or wherever they ended up. Uh, and they set it on the edge of their bathtub, and you reach over to and it falls in. Zapola. Now, water itself doesn't conduct, but there's no such thing as pure HTO. Get that out of your heads. I mean, can't fall from the sky if it's pure water. It has to condense around some sort of dust particle or dirt in the air. Which is why if they're over an area where they can suck up a lot of dirt and dust <clears throat> during a storm where there's updrafts, <clears throat> you'll get really heavy rains. <coughs> so, like I said, the IP ingress protection. The six dust. P7 or 8. How deep it can go and still be resistant to water. But these things are built. You know, you're standing in the bathroom and you're shaving and you got a bunch of water in the sink and you drop your phone in there. Oh shit. Uh, you pull it out. It'll be okay. Hey, in no way intended for you to leave it in the water. But if you do, it's like one and a half meters or one meter on the sevens uh, of water. So you're fishing alongside a river and it falls down on the rocks. And if it doesn't shatter, because you were smart enough to put a case on it, It'll be okay. You know, he'll reach down and go, here's my phone. You know, it's mostly H2O. But, swimming pools, no. No happen. Swimming pools are full of chlorine. Chlorine will break down the glue. It will break down the seals. Chlorine is corrosive. It burns your eyes. When you go swimming, it doesn't feel good. Now, if you've seen somebody do, well, I saw this company do an unboxing to water. Yeah. Yep, they probably did. They probably did in the swimming pool. There was no chlorine in that pool, folks. None. They weren't going to take a chance. Salt water. Whoa. Even worse. Because let's say, for instance, you drop your phone in the water. Oh, sure. It's yeah, right along the shoreline. It's not, the water won't get in it as long as it's not too deep. You'll pull it out. But wait a minute. Don't think for a minute you didn't cause damage. Because if you got a headphone jack, you have two contact points in there that your bug goes into. Hmm. They're exposed. They're out. Uh, Salt water, metal, and a lot of times dissimilar metal that say you I'm gonna put my headset in. And now you have a little bit of salt film on there. And it's humid out and you plug two dissimilar metals together. 
What do you have when you do that? You have a battery. That's what causes corrosion. Uh, basically, corrosion is an electrical process. <coughs> Which is why ships, if you're going to look under an aircraft carrier, would destroy it. There's these big giant blocks about that thick of zinc. Because steel is easily corroded, or the iron is. But wait, not if the anode is zinc. The zinc will give its atoms up way more freely. So the zinc's welded to the bottom of the steel hull, and all that salt water is creating this giant battery. And the zinc blocks corrode. The steel, yeah, you need a little surface corrosion, maybe. Especially in the areas that, you know, just get splashed and the paint's worn off of them. Which is why sailors spend a whole bunch of their lives painting their ships. Same with your car. The only reason you have a coat of paint on a car, folks, and the only real coat of paint that counts is the primer. One of the bonds to the material and keeps water and contaminants away so you don't get conduction. Of course, if they're putting stuff together and they're using, like, uh, say they're strapping your gas tank in, you know, with a big giant, you know, hose clamp or whatever, and they're screwing it together and the clamp is made out of one material, say, steel and the screws well we had to save weight so we used aluminum you got a battery you have some serious corrosion that's why your battery terminals on some of the less expensive or more poorly made products tend to corrode quicker that's why you get some of the covering stuff so IP68 does not mean your phone is waterproof. It is not in the least waterproof. It is water resistant. So don't fall for you know all the you get all the rivers and they're holding the thing under you know the water. Oh look, I got it in the sink and I'm rinsing it off. Well actually if you dropped it in the ocean, the first thing you should do is find a restroom. And, like, you're going to want to spray your connector back here. And if you've got a headset or something like that, you're going to want to rinse that off with pure, fresh, or as pure as it gets, H2O. They're only resistant to H2O. No chlorine, no salt. So Samsung is getting a crap suit out of it because they've got people, you know, doing all kinds of wonderful stuff. They don't come out and say it, but it's when they're mentioning the fact that they say, it's IPA 68, uh, water resistant. And then they show a guy, you know, standing ankle deep in the ocean at the beach with a cell phone in his hand. As if, oh, if he drops it now, I'll be okay. No, corrosion will start immediately. Most people pick it up and go, hmm, and wipe it off on their shirt or wherever. Oh, the sun's right out. Yeah, the salt's still there. Yeah. They're, it just means they're water resistant. And then, of course, you have companies like OnePlus that let the advertisers, uh, oh, uh, tech reviewers, who are basically in the pocket of them. Now, if you want one next year, you damn well better do as we tell you. Um, they let them do their testing live. I mean, they've already tested it. They know. Uh, they haven't done it in any official manner. They probably don't have anybody who's a trained certifier. But that's just the way it is. So, we're going to leave it right there, and hopefully uh, you now understand 
IP ratings do not mean waterproofing, they mean water resistance. Just the same as if you have a wristwatch like I do. I have one of these Casio. Uh, I can't turn my wrist that far. G-Shocks. It's good to 200 meters water resistant. Really? Seriously? Uh, I'm at 200 meters. That's well over 600 foot deep. Uh, my body's just sinking to the bottom because I'm already dead. Probably crushed and squished. And I'm sure the watch will continue to run until the battery dies. Great! Just great. That's all we got for today. If you found this useful, helpful, entertaining, or informative, give us a big thumbs up. As usual, check the description below for links. Uh, I'll link you to an article I found on Android Authority where they used, mistakenly, waterproofing numbers yeah because they're techies and they're not engineers ah uh, water resistance ratings but they do explain it and they give you the whole charts and everything there that's all i got make sure you subscribe and uh click the bell give us that thumbs up and I'll catch you in the next one.